Fantastic. All right, um, go ahead, Chris. Awesome, awesome. So um, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie called The Greatest Showman. It is literally one of my favorite movies of all time. It is really good. And what I want to first do is I want to listen to one of the songs that they sing because there's a conversation between um, P.T. Barnum, which it's about P.T. Barnum, for those of you who don't know, um, and the circus between him and a guy that he's trying to convince to get him to join the circus, um, Carlisle. So um, do you happen to, I don't know if I can share. I don't know if I can, since I'm not. Uh, you, you can share, but if you need me to play it, I think you sent me the link, right? Yeah, I sent you the link in Messenger and I also sent you the PowerPoint as well, just in case I can't share anything, so. Okay, do you want me to play it? Yeah, go ahead and play the four minute video first. Okay, um, second. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> Are you seeing my screen here? Yes. So the song will have the subtitles at the bottom, so you won't have to worry this about it. Checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. We'll get to watch an ad first. <laughs> so so trade your typical for something colorful And if it's crazy, you live a little crazy You can play a sensible, a king of conventional Or you can just go on the scene Yeah. 
So that's so yeah so so what they sing about the lyrics and all that I've um, I went ahead and broke it down um, on a PowerPoint. Did you also get the email as well, Greg? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me. See. I sent it to your Gmail. Let me see. I might be able to share mine actually. Oh yeah, open slide. Oh, there we go. Did you want to share yours or did you want me? To yeah, share? it actually looks like they're allowing me to do it. So give me a second here. All righty. And share. Can you guys see the screen OK? Yep. Fantastic. All right, so with this, um, so there, I know that the kind of went quick and stuff and all the theatrics and stuff, but I went ahead and got the lyrics from online and I went ahead and broke them down because that what they have is absolutely amazing from what I read into it. So the first thing that I wanna first mention is, is that I'm going to change up a couple things. Um, first thing before we get started is I want to say that I honestly believe that we're made up of uh, three things. We have the, our body, we have our mind, and we have our soul. Um, and then I'm also going to modify the speakers. So instead of it going to be Barnum and Carlisle, I'm going to have Barnum, what he sings, be, represent what the soul is talking about. And then Carlisle be our mind, like what can shackle what we have to say and then just as a final note if you haven't watched the greatest showman make sure you do because it is amazing so so just to get that out of the way first so so the first bit that barnum first talks about is that he's talking with carlisle and he's saying look i have this amazing opportunity and i can cut you free from this life that you're living now a little bit of background carlisle lives in the upper class sort of people so he came from a rich family and all that so things were handed down to him but he also feels a little empty and so that's why he used kind of saw him in a bar and that sort of thing so basically what he's doing is, is that um barnum is giving him the opportunity to be free and i kind of feel the same way when it comes to our soul and the things that we want whether it's you say okay like for my wife and i for example we have we don't we haven't owned a home yet so one of the things that we want to have is our own home that we buy for example so as far as just having that feeling we have you know we you know we live our typical lives we go to our job nine to five jobs or whatever and there's something in us that wants a little bit more than what we're living right now you know a little bit more excitement a little bit a break from the typical if we want to play it we can play it safe we can live a safe life or we could decide to take a couple risks and see the life that we could have kind of thing and that's so that's the first part there that he's saying is like saying look you ha you're living in this um, world of yours right now but if you come with me if you move forward that is something that you can um, experience sort of thing and then um, this is the chorus you know and this is kind of like you know because I know I experienced this in my soul where it says you know wouldn't it be nice if you know such and such happened wouldn't it be nice if we had this or we had that or that kind of thing what if we could be so much more um, what's interesting is that he mentions about staying in the cage um, I really like that analogy because, you know, whether it's other things that we've talked about before, um, we've talked about, you know, how jobs will say, you know, you have to stay at your job, you have to be there for, you know, however many years, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever, then you retire, and then you take your retirement, and then that's it. And, and it just seems like that's just a clear cut thing you know like people say that oh yeah it's just pretty clear cut you just do this 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 and then you retire and then boom and then or 
So you could take that route. You can decide to say, yeah, I'll go ahead and, you know, play it safe because, you know, you're not, you're not struggling. You're not, you know, doing, I mean, it's not like, you know, you're poor and you're struggling to eat kind of thing. It's just more like that you can stay here in this little box or you can say, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and take that next step further. You know, like what if sort of thing. Now the, come on now. Now it's not moving there. Oh, freak. Sorry, my screen's a little slow. There we go. There we go. So now we go over to the mind. So the soul has that dream. It thinks about those things that you say, hey, wouldn't it be nice if. Then the mind comes in. Because because the one thing that I'll mention a little bit later on is that the soul has these dreams, but then the mind has the practicality of things. So, and the thing about our mind is that it's not a bad thing. It's just a natural safeguard. It sees something that's dangerous, and then it puts up its guard to protect us. Um, for example, um, I personally would never want to go um, bungee jumping because I've seen too many videos of the cord snapping and things like that and horrible things happening. So it's like, no, I'm not going to do that sort of thing. So, um, or even just as simple things, like it's not good to go out into, into the street when there are cars coming, you know? So the mind is not a bad thing, but sometimes the mind goes so far as to protect us that it will keep us from moving on to that next level of, you know, taking risk and that sort of thing. Um, when it's out of the experience, and when it's kind of like, say you're looking at something and you admire someone for it, like you admire someone who takes a risk in, you know, doing something, it'll say, huh, that's kind of a neat idea. And they admire the people that do that. But then when the question comes to you and says, do you want to do that hard thing? Do you want to do that difficult thing? Is it like, eh, no, 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 thank you. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention, I, I, I kind of thought this was funny and, you know, Tom and Greg, I know that you can um, speak to this a little bit, but we can, you can later if you want, but I put the little comment of peanut shells on the bottom because as you guys delve into this business, metaphorically speaking, you guys have a lot of peanut shells to clean up after, you know, like you put out your posts, you do this and do this and do this. And then it's like, oh, you get to reach out to people. You get a few nibbles. Those are the people who buy your peanuts. And then they're like, oh, I'm interested. And then they ghost you. And it's like, now they just leave their freaking peanut shells all over the place. And it's like, okay, now got to move on, I guess. Got to clean them up and move on. So I kind of thought of you too. So when I saw that in there, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. So, so, and that's another thing is that our mind says, look, I mean, if we go ahead and move forward, look at all the stuff we have to do. We have to do this. We have to make up for our business. We have to do posts. We have to do stories. We have to do this. We have to, and then when we get people, oh yeah, they nibbled, but then it's all like, oh, then they go away. And it's like, Ugh, and then you have to do it again and do it again kind of thing. So um, that's another thing that the mind could say with us. Um, the next thing that our mind will go on and, try to do then is that they say okay i'm not going to do that hard thing i'm not going to go ahead and move forward and it will rationalize forever you say and then it'll say things like okay you know what i have enough you know i have gas in my car i can pay my bills um i can you know watch whatever shows i like i can just sit and do this and do that or whatever and you know i'm good See, the mind, the mind realizes, you know, I'm not in suffering mode. You know, I'm not, you know, like I mentioned before, like I'm not out, you know, I'm not poor. I'm not starving. I'm not, you know, you know, going through these hard things in life. I'm good, you know. And so it says, you know, and then as it continues down that path and then it'll start trying to convince our soul, like we're not living in a cage, but and we're doing fine. And then we don't, quote unquote, need to see the other side, which I believe the vast majority of us do. Like, I don't know if any of you saw my story yesterday. I posted about how my colleagues, you know, they really wanted Friday to be over with. They were all like, it's Friday. I just want to go home. Like I had a dude seven, 10 minutes into our shift. He's all like, I want Friday to be over. I'm like, really? And in my mind, I'm going, your mind just shut off that quick. You've been here 10 minutes. It's like, you got a 10 hour shift, whatever, but whatever. So um let's see here that's true so many people they they live for the weekend right i mean and yeah and such a small part of your life so mm-hmm 
Mm -hmm, exactly. Now, this is this is the big part of the conversation that you know that I really want us to focus on. At least I want to focus on because I really like this. So the soul then responds back. At least my soul does this anyway. So the mind puts us in these safeguards and they say, okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing good kind of thing. And I'm doing just fine. The soul then responds back and it says, is this really how you want to spend your life? And I mean, I know the lyrics say whiskey, misery and parties and plays because that's, you know, the whole plot with Carlisle in the movie. But you could replace that with anything else. It doesn't have to be you know, whiskey. It could be, you know, going out with your friends over the weekend. It could be um, things that you need to get done, even just normal chores. It's like, do you just want to do chores? Do you just want to do this and do this and do this? Is that, is that what you want to do? You know, just live for the weekend, you know, even though there's 52 of them a year. Um, it's like, you know, I just keep doing this. Then the mind comes back and then it'll make arguments back. So, and I love what he says back and he says if i were mixed up with you i'd be the talk of the town disgraced dis disowned that sort of thing and that's kind of like what my mind says is when i try to put out posts and stuff like that it's all like you know if i if i do this you know if i put myself out there you know people could criticize me people could say oh you know you've been you know I, the past 93 days you've been working out 91 of them and, and but you know you don't have six pack abs what you know what the crap you know, people could criticize me. People could say, oh, you know, what's your, what's this or what's that about me, you know? And that is true. People could say things about you. People could go ahead and say, oh, you know, you do that. You know, like even just we were talking, you know, in conversations before, oh, you do Beachbody. And it's like Beachbody has a negative connotation. It's all like, oh, no, no thanks kind of thing. Um, and then the soul at least again, so, so again, in this conversation that they're having, they, they put up these things, then he responds with this, but you would live a little, laugh a little, give you the freedom to dream, wake you up, cure your aching, that kind of thing. And then the soul says, look, there's another way to live life, which I'm sure, you know, I know at least Greg touched on it a little bit in our webinar on Thursday about how you know, he has earned a million dollars doing Beachbody. And I don't know if you want to, Greg, later when, when I'm done with this, which is I only have like a couple slides left, but you can talk about the contrast between what it was like working in IT, that life versus what you're doing now, even. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very big contrast. And then the risk, the effort that you put in, you can see so much more. Um, and as you saw later on in the song, they started negotiating. So I'm skipping all that part of the lyrics and stuff. Um, then the next thing, then the last bit of the song, come on now. My computer's really slow. There we go. Okay, so here's the thing. When the soul and the mind connect, they will then speak to our body and then our body has no choice to then move forward. When my soul and my mind says, okay, you're gonna work out today, the body's gonna work out. Unless something happens, like I roll over my ankle or I do something, then the body will communicate to the mind and say, hey, uh, we got injured, I am unable to walk or jump. You know, let's, you know, we need to do this or that. That'll communicate that to the mind and then the mind will say, hey soul, we need a rest day. And then the soul will say, okay, fine or whatever. But my point is, is that when the soul and the mind connect, they will have to talk to our body and then our body will then have to react from there further. And so they start talking about, okay, do you want to get away from this cage, this box that we're just supposed to be in? And then you go ahead and move forward and then say, hey, you know what? Instead of being boxed in this cage, now we can fly now. We can, the mind, and the, the, the interesting thing is this, the mind will stop resisting if our soul keeps persisting it, but the opposite can occur as well. So our soul says, hey, you know what? Maybe this could be something really amazing. And then the mind says, oh no, we can't do that because of X, Y, Z situation. And then if the soul says, yeah, okay, fine. And then the soul can, the soul, the soul could stop resisting too. So it works both ways. And then, and honestly, you can choose who win who wins which battles you know if you if the mind says hey you know what maybe this is not a good idea soul says you know what yeah let's go ahead and lose this battle for once and to win the war if to use that metaphor 
And then just just for closing thoughts. So that's the whole song. And then I just have one more slide for closing thoughts. Come on, reload, please. There we go. So then the question is, what are you going to do? Like I mentioned before, the soul and the mind are always going to be in contention. You wake up with it. You wake uh, like for me every day when I wake up in the morning, I do not want to work out before I go to work. I really don't. But I do it. You know, the soul and the mind says, hey, the pillow feels really nice. The comforters feel really nice. Come on, just sleep in a little. Come on. You can skip one day. You know, if you've worked out, you know, you've only had two rest days in the past 93 days. Come on, you can take a third. Like, no, I'm not. So and then that's and that's what my soul says back is like, no, we're going to go ahead and move forward. We're going to go ahead and push forward. So, like I said, you can choose to whether to listen to what's really deep down or you can listen to your mind. Now, as I was as I want to make very clear, I'm not saying only listen to your soul. Because as I mentioned before, the soul doesn't take into practicality. You could say, oh, I'm going to be like Greg and earn a million dollars this year. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, I'll just buy a lottery ticket. No, you know, this is like, no, you can't. That, that, that's not what it is. It's just the mind has to go into things like I need to think about, okay, if I'm going to earn a million dollars, what does that look like? You know, what steps do I need to break down? And sometimes the mind can get so overwhelmed that it's all like, oh, this list is so big. I have to do this, 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 and this. No, thank you. And then, um, but then again, that's where you have to go back into process and you have to think about what's going on with that. The one thing that I would say is, is that a lot of people, at least everyone that I've met in jobs and things like that, you know, I find that their soul is really not that awake. They just see, you know, I'm in society, I'm living my life, I want to do this, I think this would be great. But then, you know, they really don't think about what more they could do. So the one thing that I would, would just have you guys think about, just challenge yourselves, especially this weekend is, if you think your soul is asleep, wake it up and engage your mind. It is very tough. It is very difficult to have the conversations, to have those raw conversations with yourself and say, you know what, you know, to, ex to pardon my language, you're not doing shit with your life. You know, that's what I'll say with myself a lot is that I will say, you know, it's, you know, I'm not doing stuff, you know, I need to do more. Not for the sake of just doing more just because I want to strive for it. It's just that I'm honestly, I have more potential within me than I know. And I know that I can be more. So, um, so that's all I have with regard to that. Um, let me just go ahead and put this back here. Stop. There we go. So that's kind of been my journey the past, you know, three months, 93 days or whatever, is just learning to get my soul and my mind to connect. And again, it's just, it is a very slow process because there's just a lot of things my mind is just so used to that, I mean, I'm going to be, I mean, I know I'm kind of young. I'm going to be 32 next Friday, but, but if you think about it, almost 32 years of me having this mindset of just, oh, I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to be here, going to be here kind of thing. Like, like for me, my mind always wanted the easy way out. Like when I wasn't good at a job, I just quit and went to the next one. And then I quit and went to the next one because you know how easy it is to find a job. It really is really not that hard. You know, you literally search on Indeed or on ZipRecruiter, no experience needed. And there's like thousands of jobs that you can apply for that you can just go, oh, go, you apply. I like the place that I'm working at right now. I applied on Tuesday. I started working Thursday. Like it was that fast. You know, it's like we can drop jobs and go to the next one whenever we want. So but anyway, I wanted to take at least a little bit of time and see um talk about see if you guys had anything to talk about or maybe i could I, I don't mind sharing more about my personal journey kind of thing too so no i think that was uh that was great um i i agree like i i waited till i was 40 to to start uh taking risk right mm -hmm. and, and put myself out there right i mean mm -hmm. like always working in the same box like you're talking about keeping it safe you know, making excuses. Well, I got a family to support, blah, blah, blah. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, just decided to take a risk and with Beachbody, it's such a small risk, right? I mean, exactly. it's, 
Um, exactly. You're using the products. You're you're getting the benefit of the products. Um, there's nothing required of you. So for me, that was like a you know the mind come into play there, right? Like, oh, this is a this is a very small calculated risk. You can take mm-hmm. it. You can take this. Step. You know, you can see. You know, um, and then putting in the work is a different story, right? That's a different excuse that people have. Mm-hmm. So exactly. For me, that wasn't uh, an issue, right? You know, it's like, I, I didn't mind putting in the in the work. It, you know, as long as I could see some results and I did, you know, and I, and I got the accountability and stuff that I was looking for. Um, and then it evolved into me starting another business, right? Which I would have never have done if it wouldn't <laughs> for Beachbody, you know? And it's- mm-hmm. Like you said, it's it's been a complete complete change for me. It's like no longer am, do I am I working for the weekend, right? Am I living my life in a nine to five to retire in forty years, right, or whatever? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because again, I mean, like, like it's I mean that's the safe option. You just do that one thing for 30, 40 years, and then you call it and you retire, and then you're good, kind of thing. And it's all like that's it's the safe. <laughs> yeah and then you die exactly so it's like so it's just like so so for me it's like it's just that next step of you know i could be more than what i am now kind of thing um but yeah thank you greg i was i knew that i knew you'd get that for sure i don't know i know you've i know time that you've been doing this for three years and i know you do work both ends of the job but i'm sure you can start to feel a little bit of that at least oh yeah absolutely you know i was you know, my, my job, my work, I'm comfortable with it. I mean, that was a goal of mine, you know, when I first started out as, you know, as a teenager and I got into engineering. I mean, I wanted to be director. I wanted to you know, run the building. So, you know, I didn't think beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was content with it for a while. And to me, it was more, you know, just the health and fitness has been a passion of mine. And, and I dabbled in the real estate and stuff too. So I've got, you know, I've, I took, took risks. I mean, you know, financially. But when I saw that this, I mean, it was just, you know, freaking match made in heaven. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but yeah, there is, you know, there, there, there is no real risk, which, you know, I guess is sometimes I think not, it, it's a great thing, but be, because people don't think of it as, you know, I mean, like I, 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 I bought a house and when, you know, the, something goes wrong, yeah, you got to fix it. You got to get the apartment rented out. I got to get done. It doesn't matter if I, have, I, I work my job, work around the clock. You do what you got to do to make it happen. I mean, it's, 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 I can't pay that mortgage. But Beachbody, if you, you wake up and you, you know, you don't feel like doing your follows, you don't feel like, you know, you don't want to leave your comfort zone. You don't want to do a post. It's, uh, what do you got? You know, mm-hmm. paying $14 a month. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think having that so easy sometimes, you know, it makes people more more lax with it. You got to take it seriously and think of it as a, as a real business. I mean, I, it's the way I focus on it. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing that I love too is, is that um, one of the guys that I listened to, Tom Bilyeu, he said in a video of his, he said, the thing about excuses is that excuses are valid. Because if you have things that happen, if you say, look, I have this or I have that, I have my job, I have my family to take care of, that sort of thing. The excuses are valid. But the thing is, is that, will you find a way to move forward? You know, and it's like, and that's, and that's the one thing that our mind will tell us is that, you know, these are legitimate things. I mean, life happened. I mean, we had a freaking pandemic hit, right? It's like, but we can choose to either say, okay, the pandemic is going to ruin my life forever. Or you can say, you know what, I'm going to grow from this. And honestly, I don't know if, you know, personally for me, if COVID haven't hit, I don't know if I would have had the mindset that I've honestly had for the past 93 days. So as much as I hate to say that COVID was a good thing for me, it honestly was because of how much more I'm becoming of a person. Um, again, I don't want to spend too much time talking, but uh, did, anyone, um, did anyone else have any thoughts or uh, maybe questions about uh, what I presented today? You kind of hit me the nail on the head because uh, that's usually me as I'm making the excuses because I've got to drive. I got to make sure I've got enough sleep because people's lives depend on me driving safely. And, 
So I kind of make those excuses not to do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I and was like you way. said, they're valid, they're valid excuses. I just haven't figured out how to overcome them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I prefer the phrase personally, I, I have to make time for it instead of I have to find a time because it's like we have 24 hour days. It's like, it's the same amount of time, no matter what. It's like, no, I need to make the time for it. So it's like, I, that, I prefer that too. So it's like, yeah, it's exactly what you said, um, said Connie. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I've, I've had the same excuses when I was a teacher. I think that was one of the reasons why I quit first was I was like, I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm way too busy. I'm, it's 24 seven for me, which honestly for people, teachers now it is definitely 24 seven yeah. now. So, <laughs> yeah. so. I but, remember, uh, were you done? Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Um, I remember something Christy said was, you know, this uh, is something that she looks forward to, right? And, and getting into fitness is, is a now a passion of hers, right? Or it's always been a passion, but, you know, having, you know, this fitness opportunity is something that, right, you look forward to, right? You were saying that. And, uh, and so it doesn't, it doesn't even matter so much that, um, you know, you, you've made money or you're making money or you're, you know, whatever. But um, my point is, is it gives you something that you're passionate about, right? It's like, yeah, you have your nine to five, right? And you do that and you have to do that. Most of us, you know, still have, to, you know, most, most of you guys still have to, to do that, to, to, you know, put food on the table and stuff, right? But um, mm -hmm. it's not something that is going to get you out of bed and excited to do in the morning, right? <laughs> you know, it's, and, and that's the way it was. That's the way it started for me. It, it was like, that was something that I looked forward to doing. It was, it wasn't a, some, like you said, Chris, it's not something that I had to do or, 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 you know, I had to find time to do. It was something that I made time to do because I wanted to do it, right? It's like when I first started running my group and started inviting everybody I could, it was like something that I was passionate about and that I was having fun with and something that I looked forward to. And then when I started to make money at it, it was something that I wanted to invest more and more into because I enjoyed it. Right. So that's what we all got to do. We got to find, uh, you know, what your passion about, hopefully that passion is beach body. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But if it's not, you know, find what you are passionate about because, you know, it's important to live your life to the fullest. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Anyone else had any other thoughts or questions? Mm -mm. No, okay. One thing that, so the thing as far as not making excuses, guys, is just, it's just another way of thinking about it. This is at least works for me. And again, I'm not saying that for you to be like me, but for me, you know, I'm a super analytical person. Like if, if you take the DISC personality test, I am a very strong C and a very strong S, which means I'm very analytical and I really enjoy being with people. Um, I am super analytical with things. And so, which is why this whole thing about the conversation between the soul and the mind is like, they present two different arguments and it's like, okay, you know, like I said before, you sometimes you listen to your mind because there's just things that you have to do. But then there are other things that your soul says, you know what, you could do a little bit more kind of thing. And so what I would say for today is instead of just saying, you know, stop making excuses, what I would say is look at what your excuses are. What are, you know, as I said before, excuses are valid, but then you have to say, how can I get around them? It's not and like, I mean, for it, like I said today, I had to walk the dog literally 15 minutes before the call started. You know, it's just, just decided I want to go for a walk. I'm like, okay. And just, so I let the guy, you guys know, I said, okay, I'm, I may be late. I wasn't, I was two minutes early, but I, st but we still, but you know, I, she got her walk in, right? <laughs> she, we, it, it happened. So it's like, you know, things happen and it's, you know, but just make sure I would say, what I encourage you is not just this weekend, but just take some time, take even 10 minutes of your day and just you know, whether it's sit in silence, just sit by yourself and just say, okay, what do I want? What does my soul want in the future? What is my mind telling me? And let's work together and then move this forward. So that's, I would just say, just take that and move forward with that. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. 
You're welcome. So does uh, anybody else have anything to add before we wrap up? Tom, anything going on with the uh, beach body we should know about? <laughs> beach body events. Uh, that's just to me. If you had anybody on the call, on the call definitely follow up. And um, a, a team cup. If you guys got a uh, got time to hang out afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I, I can hang on. All right. Well, I will turn it over to you guys and leave. Um, all right. I'll Tom. I'll make you the host. All right. Thank you. All right. See you guys. See ya. Have a good one. Bye.